Well, could environmental hazards, say lead poisoning, lead to shorter prison sentences? There's a Supreme Court ruling calling mandatory life without parole sentences for juveniles unconstitutional, and it's opening the window. On your side, Skin Amaro found a Jacksonville attorney who says lead poisoning may have played a role in her client's crime, Ken. That's correct, Anthony. Attorneys come here at the courthouse and they usually argue that sex abuse, child abuse, and even poverty are reasons why a juvenile may behave badly. It's all called part of the mitigation package. That is reasoning given to prosecutors so they can have a fuller understanding of the client before sentencing. Well, now environmental hazards like lead poisoning is being included in that package. Jacksonville has its share of environmentally toxic sites where children live and play. Some of those children are now in jail serving life sentences. We have had some of our clients, um, you know, describe their life stories uh, evol revolving around these neighborhoods. Attorney Terry Sopp is the director of the resentencing project for juveniles who are serving life without parole. We have clients um, in these juvenile resentencing cases who were exposed, who lived in and on top of and went to school on top of and drank water from high lead level property. Um, these properties are still to this day fenced off and locked up in Jacksonville. Sop works at the Public Defender's Office and is now investigating the cause effect of lead poisoning to get her clients a reduced sentence. The crux of this issue is how lead poisoning or other toxic agents can affect the developing architecture of the brain and then how that plays a role in behavior, especially in an adolescent, um, in an adolescent who is engaged in criminal activity. Dr. Jeffrey Goldhagen says the evidence is documented. Well, there's overwhelming evidence. Goldhagen is the former Duval County Public Health Director. Have to be impulsive and to commit a crime, yes. Lead poisoning has been litigated in civil cases. Now it's being used in criminal cases when it can factor into sentencing. Uh, I am not sure why uh, exposure to lead has not been used more extensively in, um, in criminal uh, proceedings. The effects of lead are permanent. Given, you can understand from his surprise that given the knowledge, it hasn't been used as much. Now, the pre-sentencing or resentencing cases are on hold basically because of the pandemic, but that gives defense attorneys a chance to collect all the doc data and documents and the evidence as the cause effect of lead poisoning and how it may have played a part in their client's criminal behavior. Back to you.